Hello everyone, welcome back to the SharePoint Framework series. I am Akshay and today we will be learning how to perform basic CRUD operations using PNPJS in SPFX web part. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. These operations are fundamental for interacting with SharePoint data. And PNPJS simplifies this process. By the end of this video, you will know how to work with SharePoint lists efficiently using PNPJS. Let's get started. Before diving into the code, let's understand what PNPJS is. PNPJS is a JavaScript library designed to simplify interactions with SharePoint REST API. It provides a clean and intuitive way to perform operations like accessing lists, libraries, users, and more. The latest version 4.0 introduced modular imports, allowing you to include only the parts of the library you need, which optimizes the performance. In short, PNPJS makes SharePoint development faster and easier by reducing the amount of code you need to write. The first step in getting started is installing PNPJS via npm. PNPJS is a lightweight and extensible library designed to simplify working with SharePoint REST APIs. To install, simply open your project terminal and run the command npm install at the rate pnp slash sp. This will fetch the latest PNPJS package for you and get it added to your SPFX project's dependencies. Next, we will create a configuration file for initializing PNPJS. Let's call it pnpconfig.ts. This file acts as a central setup point for pnpjs in your project. On the screen, you can see how the code looks like. This script does two key things. It initializes pnpjs with the spfx context using the spfx module. It also provides a utility function getsp to ensure the library is properly initialized before any operations are performed. Finally, to connect everything, we need to initialize pnpjs with your spfx web part. In the web part on init method or wherever your web part starts, call the initialize pnp function and pass the current spfx context. You just need to initialize pnp and pass this dot context. This ensures that the pnpjs library is correctly tied to your SharePoint instance and ready for use. If this feels overwhelming, don't worry, later in the video, I will show you a demo of how to set this up step by step, including the file locations. And I will also share the code in the video description for you to follow along easily. Now let's quickly recap what CRUD operations are and why they are important. Create. It adds a new item to SharePoint list. Read. It retrieves data from a SharePoint list. Update. It modifies existing item in a SharePoint list. Delete. It removes item from a SharePoint list. With PNPJS, you can perform all these operations using simple readable code. Let's dive into each one of them. Let's start with create operation, where we will add a new item into SharePoint list. Use the item.add method from pnpjs to insert data into the list. On the screen you can see the code. Here, replace list name with the name of your SharePoint list and modify the fields as needed. When you run this code, it adds a new item to the SharePoint list. Next, let's retrieve data from SharePoint list using the read operation. The code that you can see, it retrieves all the list items in the list and add them to a variable. You can also specify filters or limit the fields you retrieve to optimize performance. In the future videos, we will go through advanced filtering and how to retrieve thousands of list items. Now let's modify an existing item in the list using the update operation. Use the items.getbyid.update method to update a specific item. Here in the code, you can see id to update. You can replace this with the id that you want to update. The code that you see, it updates title column in the specified list. Finally, let's remove an item from the SharePoint list using the delete operation. Use the item.getbyid.delete method to delete the ID. Replace ID with the ID of the item you want to delete. The code that you see on your screen, it deletes a specified item from a list. Here are some best practices to ensure your crude operations are robust and reliable. Use try-catch blocks, wrap your code in try-catch statements to handle error gracefully. Validate input data. Check that required fields are populated before making API calls. Optimize API calls. Retrieve only the fields you need to reduce payload size. Log errors. Use console.error or integrate logging services like Azure Monitor or App Insights for better debugging. On the screen, you can see an example of error handling. By following these practices, you create a web parts that are efficient and user-friendly. 
now let's see all the crude operations together in action so this is the web part that i have created to showcase crude operations so here i can add any title let's say akshay and i can click create and it will be added to the sharepoint list here you can see an item with id 7 and title akshay is now created i can create multiple items like this now the bottom part the table that you see it is performing read operations on the sharepoint list and showing all the values that are there currently there are only two values and i can even update the value let's say i want to update this seven item id with spfx i can add the title i can add the item id and i can click on update now you can see it is updated to spfx you can also click on delete to delete the item from the list now let's go through the code so the first step that we are going to do is we are going to set up our pnp so once you have installed pnp using npm i command we need to create a file called pnp config file.ts name does not matter and also the location does not matter so i have created it inside source web parts hello world folder you can use the same contents of this file there is nothing to change here then you need to go to your webpart.ts file and initiate it so here you just need to write initialize pnp and pass this dot context you just have to write this on on init function you also need to import it once you have done this your pnp basic setup is done now you can use it anywhere in your code I have created a spfx crude.tsx file to demonstrate the crude operations. This is a react functional component that I have created. At the top, you will see imports. Here, I have added all the necessary imports for crude operations. And I have also added imported get sp from pnp config file that we created just now. Now let's go to the component. Here, on the line number 24, you can see I have initialized the SP variable. This SP variable is necessary to perform all the operations. Now let's go through all the functions one by one. So the first function that we are going to see is this create item function. This function is called when we are creating a new SharePoint list item. In our example, we have a single title column which we wanted to add in the list. So the first thing that it does is it checks if title is null, undefined or empty. If it is any of those, it shows an alert which says title is required. If there is some value in title, it goes into this try block. Here we are using the pnpjs instance that we created at the top, this one. From there. It goes to the list and then we are using this get by title method in this method we are passing the list where we want to add the item so here i will add the list name then i will do dot items and then inside the items i want to add a new item so i will do dot add and here inside the object i'm giving the internal internal name of the column and the value which i want to add and once it runs, it creates a new item. Then we have this fetch item functions. So this fetch item function, what it does is it fetches all the list items from SharePoint. Here if you see, again we are using that pnpjs instance and in the list and here I am selecting the list where I want to get all the items and dot items. This will get all the items. And then I'm storing all the items in this list item variable and then I'm setting the states and then I'm rendering it on the screen. Then we have this update item function. 
So what it does is it takes two parameters, the new title that we want to update and the ID where we want to update. So again, it will check if both of th those values are there. If they are there, then again, uh, using the pnpjs instance, we are getting the list where we want to update and we are getting the items of that list. And then in get by ID, we are passing the ID which we want to update. And then we are doing dot update and giving the internal name of the column which I want to update and the new value which needs to be there. And if everything is fine, then we are showing items added successfully, else we are logging the errors to the console. Then last function is this delete item function. So what it does is it takes the ID which I, uh, we want to delete and here also uh, from the pnpgs context or instance we are getting all the lists then we are getting the list we want to delete from then from its item dot get by id and here i will add the id which i want to delete and then dot delete method it will then delete that id in this episode we are focusing exclusively on crude operations in react and sharepoint pnp context i won't be diving into the complete react logic here this episode is purely demonstrating the crude functions in action. To make it easier for you to follow along, I have provided the link to the full project in the description below. Feel free to try it out and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will do my best to help you out. Let's recap what we have covered today. Installed and set up PNPJS 4.0 in SPFX project. Performed crude operations. Create which added a new item to SharePoint list, read, which retrieved list items, update, which modified existing item, delete, which removed list items. We discussed error handling and best practices to ensure reliability. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for future updates. Let me know in the comments which PNPJS feature you would like to learn next. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we will explore how to integrate Microsoft services with SPFX web part. Until then, happy coding.